Before we start the video guys, you can get your first month of Envato Elements for only $9 via the link below. If you've watched this channel or if you're a video editor, you probably know what Envato Elements is. It's a pretty good deal. Check it out. Every subscription helps the channel. All right, let's get into this video. And how's it going guys? It's your boy Josh Olufemi, live from LA. I know it's been a while since we've dropped the tutorial, but we've been working on a lot of cool digital products behind the scenes. You've probably seen a bunch of incredible tutorials from my bro Dave, an extremely talented video director, audio engineer, and everything in between. He's actually on the phone right now on Clubhouse. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, right now, actually for this video, we're gonna be talking about removing reverb or echo out of your videos, out of the audio. It's a very, very important tutorial that I feel like would be useful for anyone watching. All right, Dave, floor is yours. Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Dave. Thanks Josh for having me along for this video right here. Today I want to show you two ways of getting rid of reverb from your tracks. So let's jump straight into Premiere. So right here I've got an example of this uh, video we shot. We didn't use the video for this exact part, uh, but we did use the audio. So the audio sounds a bit like this. You'll hear it. It sounds a bit reverby because obviously we're in a big hall. Uh, he's using a dynamic microphone, actually this one right here. And this is what it sounds like. Probably walk into a period of, of history which is going to be really challenging. And so we need people who are going to be with it there with us. So as you can hear, there's a lot of reverb. There's a lot of background noise. Today, we're going to be focusing on the reverb and how to get rid of that. Now, in within Premiere, what I want you to do is obviously go to the editing bar. I want you to go to the audio track mixer. And if you can't see that, that is right there. So you just need to make sure you click that. So this window appears. Toggle that switch right here right at this point you'll see this window and what you want to do is obviously this audio file is on track number two so i'm going to be focused on everything to do with this track right here now you could add this effect onto the actual audio clip down here but i prefer just working track by track because if you're doing interview style stuff you're just making sure everything's consistent within that track so i'm going to go up here and find a plugin called D Reverb. It's under Noise Reduction Restoration D Reverb. I'm going to double click on that, and this is what you see when you click on it. So I've applied it onto that second track, and as we're going along, it's just going to kind of automatically detect what frequencies we need to mess around with. And it, obviously, if you go extreme with this, you're going to notice, but this is what it sounds like with just me not touching anything, just from the default preset that comes with it. Probably walk into a period of, of history, which is gonna be really challenging. Uh, this is without? Probably walk into a period of, of history, which is gonna be really challenging. So it's doing a bit of work there. I'm gonna mess around with this smart toggle right here and see what I can get out of this. I'm I might, I'll go extreme and see <laughs> see what happens. Let's go up to like 80, see what happens with that probably walk into a period of, of history, which is gonna be really challenging. So as you can see there, it's really affected it. So we kind of have to find a middle ground with this and see what sounds best on the track, what sounds a bit more natural, but also doesn't actually just kill the audio. Let's go with 50%, see what that sounds like. Probably walk into a period of, of history, which is gonna be really challenging. Sounds quite clean there. I can still hear a few artifacts, a few warbly bits where the reverb used to be. Uh, let's reduce it slightly, go down to 38, see what that sounds like. Probably walk into a period of, of history, which is gonna be really challenging. So that sounds really good. Let's turn it off and see what it sounded like before. Probably walk into a period of, of history, which is gonna be really challenging. Yeah, did work right there. So it's a really easy plugin within Premiere. You don't have to go into any third party stuff. And this is the first way of doing it. Let's just see the end result. Probably walk into a period of, of history, which is going to be really challenging. So that sounds really good. Now, the second way you can correct this, I think is a bit better, gives you a few more controls and is a third party plugin, which means it'll cost a bit of money. But trust me, it is worth it for what you pay. I'm going to go to Isotope. It's one of the plugins by Isotope called D Reverb. Now, if you don't see this, side note, if you don't see this right here, or if you don't, if you can't see your third-party plugins, because this happens quite often, you want to go to Preferences, you want to go to Audio, and if you've installed Audio Plugins, you want to go down to here, Audio Plugin Manager, and scan for new plugins, 
and then enable the plugins you need. So that is a like a little side note, just in case you can't find your plugins that you've already bought. So you want to go in, find the plugin called D Weaver by Isotope and double click on that. As you can see here, we've got a few more controls. As good as the default one by Adobe is, it's only got one slider. It's got a few options here for you, but it's only got one slider, which means you're totally relying on what the plugin is doing. Whereas with D Weaver from RX, we've got a few more options. Now I'm going to press this learn button. And what that learn button does is it learns the profile of the reverb. So it's really smart. I don't know how it works, but it's really smart because every verby sound and room and voice is very unique. So what this does is it finds out the specific reverb of this room. So I'm going to press the learn button. I'm going to press play. Probably walk into a period of, of history, which is going to be really challenging. When profiling a sound, what I like to do is play through the spoken bits as we've got right here, but also play through the gaps because that means it can learn some of the room ambience and also adjust the settings to the tail of the reverb. The tail of the reverb means as soon as the last word is said or the last sound is projected, it can calculate off the reflections of the room how long the tail is, I guess, is really smart the way it works. So we've profiled the sound. I'm going to take this reduction slide down to about one and see what we can get there. And the cool thing is you can output the reverb only, which means you can hear what the plugin is doing or what it's taking away. So I'm just going to play that. Probably walk into a period of, of history, which is going to be really challenging. So it's really subtle there. I'm going to take it up to, say, three and play that probably walk into a period of, of history which is going to be really challenging so it's doing work there it's doing a really good job i'm just going to output the reverb only so we can hear what the plugin is actually doing or what it's taking out it's quite impressive what it does because i can hear it being quite forceful with everything i'll just take it down to 2.2 .2. All this stuff you're doing, you want like slight adjustment, incremental changes. You don't want to go extreme with the plugin because it all starts sounding quite unnatural. So down to 2.2, .2, let's see what this sounds like. Probably walk into a period of, of history, which is going to be really challenging. So I think that sounds really good there. I'm just going to bypass it so you can hear what the original sounds like. Probably walk into a period of, of history, which is going to be really challenging. And then with the plugin on probably walk into a period of, of history which is going to be really challenging the difference there is amazing i think it did a slightly better job than the d reverb stock plugin because you got a few more options now if you wanted to mess around with the plugin a bit more you can enhance the dry signal so let's see what that sounds like probably walk into a period of, of history which is going to be really challenging sometimes it sounds good sometimes it doesn't sound great according to what you're working with but it's a good option to have because it enhances that dry signal over here these controls we can individually solo and see what the profile of that reverb is for that room so if i solo say the lows the low mids if i was to choose from the two i'll probably choose the one from rx just because it's got a few more options and it is really cool so let's go ahead and test out another more extreme example. I'm going to go with this one right here. Now I've stepped back quite far away and I'm speaking into the microphone. This is me talking to a microphone. So let's test this and see how much better we can make this sound. Obviously this is an extreme case. I wouldn't advise anyone speaking into a microphone that far away, but let's see how powerful these plugins are. First of all, I'm going to do this thing where I'll just take this audio clip into Adobe Audition. And what I'm gonna do is, first of all, just normalize the track. Now, this is what I do. And what normalizing does is takes the loudest peak and just adjusts everything to that. So it's a bit louder. This is me talking to a microphone. I'm gonna save that. And as you can see, that's adjusted this track right here. Let's take that onto track number three. This is me talking to a microphone. So it's boosted everything. That's just a bit of handling noise. We don't need that. Now let's adjust this and see how much better we can make this sound. So first of all, let's go to track number three right here. And let's go with 
isotope because that's my favorite. Let's see how much better we can make this sound. First of all, I need to profile this reverb. So I'm gonna press the learn button and then press play. This is me talking to a microphone. So that's what that sounds like. That's the reverb profile for that room and my voice. Let's go to three and see what this sounds like. This is me talking to a microphone. Again, you can hear it quite verbally still. This is what it's taken out. Because it's not taking much out, let's uh, be a bit more extreme with that. Let's go up to seven, see what that does. This is me talking to a microphone. Let's see what it's taken out. Let's go a bit more extreme with that. Let's go up to 10, see what that does. This is me talking to a microphone. Let's mess with the tail length right here. Let's go a bit higher on the tail length and see if we can capture some of these overhanging reflections. This is me talking to a microphone. See what it's taking out. Ooh, it's doing work there. I like that. Let's go a bit more extreme with this. Let's go up to let's go up to 15 first. See what it does there. This is me talking to a microphone. So that's a significant change right there. That's pretty ridiculous what it's doing. But we still hear some of that ambience, some of that background noise that we're just gonna have to use another plugin to deal with that. Let's go with the stock plugin, the D Reverb by Adobe and see what that does with just one slider. So we've got the best results from RX we can get. Let's see what the stock plugin does. Let's start quite high Let's see what it does there. This is me talking to a microphone. Sounds quite different. Let's go with 59. This is me talking to a microphone. Let's bypass it and see what that does. This is me talking to a microphone. This is me talking to a microphone. So that's what it sounds like around 59. If I go really extreme, this is what it's going to sound like. This is me talking to a microphone. So I want to go that extreme. It starts getting a bit weird, a bit warbly. This is me talking to a microphone. That's a bit clearer. This is me talking to a microphone. I'd probably go there. 59, that seems like a sweet spot. Just to get rid of that ambient noise, I'm just going to mess around and go with denoise. That again is a one slider background noise canceling tool. So right now I've got D Reverb, the stock plugin, and Denoise by Adobe. This is me talking to a microphone. So that starts sounding a bit artifacty. So I'm just gonna have to find the sweet spot between those two plugins. Let's see if that does it. This is me talking to a microphone. I think that sounds a lot better than the original because the original sounds a bit like this. This is me talking to a microphone. Compared to. This is me talking to a microphone. So there you have it. Two ways of getting rid of reverb on your tracks. Hope this helps you guys until next time. See you guys. Dave, thank you so much for such an incredibly talented tutorial. The entire audience loves you. We want to keep seeing content from you. We always learn so much. Guys, please make sure to share this video with anyone that needs to see it. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Remember to check out Envato Elements. You can get it for $9 for the first month. And as always, remember to keep it chill.